get the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number seven of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we would have our segment called The List of Ten, which is our top moments of the week and not so top moments of the week. And WWE headlines where we talk about any important news related to WWE, which will be missing this week. Um, we're just going to do the reviews and our TakeOver Chicago and Backlash predictions in this episode for y'all. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker. Available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app that is available for all Android and Apple devices after we are done recording. The podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown so- Show. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP and join in the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Bar WP, all one word. All the links will be in the description below on YouTube for you guys. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host as always, and I'm always continued to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Go Yankees. Go oh, Yankees. What? This is a Yankees, the Yankees podcast. Today. What are you doing? <laughs> You're wearing a Yankee wrestling. shirt. You know, I can't talk about wrestling this week because it's just... I have to think about something else good. Nah. Because uh, wrestling uh, had me very blissed off this week. Ooh. We'll get into that in the review. Uh, I think it was okay. We'll it's get terrible. into that in the review. Uh, Glorious Greg, afternoon, gents. The glorious one is back. Hello, Greg. Finally. Finally. Wow. We missed last week's show <laughs> due to uh, unknown reasons. Greg, you're, you, you get knocked off a point for uh, Twitter fan of the year. Ouch. He's going he's gonna to be sad about that one. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lowdown Show. Right here on Spreaker. Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. Or if YouTube, you're or if you're listening YouTube. to this not live, we're here on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. YouTube's being corporate as hell that all the wrestling podcasts out there. Yeah, a lot of people we follow and uh, a lot of our friends are getting uh, screwed on YouTube. Uh, we're we're not getting screwed because we don't make money because we're not we're kind of a non profit podcast here. So it doesn't really affect us. We don't monetize anything, we don't do anything like that. We don't ask for money. We don't do anything. So we're just a, a hobby-based podcast here. Yeah. Do this out of a hobby. Um, Greg says, my boy Cappy, I'm a Yankees fan too. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Freaking all rise Evil Empire. Judge, that's all I got to say. Whatever. Anyways. not a sports <laughs> podcast. Uh, speaking of the podcast, guys, if you'd like to support the podcast, so I'm not asking you to do it. I'm just letting you know. Got to plug it. before. I got to plug it. We have Patreon. It's available for you guys. As little as a dollar a month, you can support the podcast and you get some interesting things every month uh, and certain dollar amounts and uh, lead to some stuff so go read that on Patreon or if you like to uh, support the podcast in our quest to Wrestlemania next year we have a GoFundMe page which uh, basically all funds go towards us getting to Wrestlemania we're taking the big road trip driving all the way down to New Orleans next year for Wrestlemania so that is the two plugs there I had to get out of the way and uh, I think that's it for uh, plugs that's it it's it. Hope everybody has a good long weekend this weekend. Yeah, long weekend for uh, Canadians and Americans, both different uh, holidays this weekend. Yep. Us with uh, Victoria Day and the Americans' uh, is Independence Day. What's, what's I don't her? remember what it is. It's the American long weekend this weekend. <laughs> what is it, Greg? <laughs> I'm, I'm Googling right now. Long weekend. I'm, I'm so bad. I can't believe I don't, I don't know the long weekend this weekend. Isn't it? Uh... Is it Memorial Day? Yeah, they're. I it's Memorial know. Day, yeah. It's Memorial Day. Oh my God, how do I, how do I forget that? I don't know. They don't even know that we celebrate <laughs> things up down there. Yeah. So. Um. Just gonna figure it out. But we're going to Collecticon on Monday, getting some figures. See what happens. Yep, we're going to uh, our, our. We we do we have this thing called Collecticon up here, which we're, we're gonna see some, uh, look for and, and get some uh, action figures. There'll be action figures. So uh, look for some pictures on our Instagram for that. Um. 
Yeah, Greg, it's going to be a long trip. Yeah, it's going to be a really long trip to WrestleMania year. I keep thinking about it every day, but like our trip onto this to WrestleMania next year, and it's gonna be boy, gassed. man, like we're driving all the way down there. Like we're stopping off in Nashville to pick up our boy T- Tyler Jones, and we're probably going to crash at his place until we drive in the morning. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a long drive. Like I, we plan to get in there the Thursday night, um, before WrestleMania weekend, and we're that night we're just gonna eat something, maybe make something while we're there, and then go right to bed because we got a long day the next day. We want to hit access. We want to hit everything that week. We want to do everything. We got to do Hall of Fame, access, WrestleCon. We want to do everything. Um, so it's gonna be a very quick sleep. When we get to, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to stock up on our Tim, my boy Tim Hortons. Yeah, we coffee. found uh, found our place already. But we're gonna stay. We found it through Airbnb, great website, and we found a perfect house. This thing is beautiful, and it's gonna definitely gonna be good for us for that weekend. I'm thinking uh, you don't want, you know, after a long day, you don't want to go back to like a hotel room, man. That's just to me Crowded. like I, I to me that's just it does nothing for me, and it. You're stuck in a hotel room doing what? At least, like, with Airbnb, you get, like, a full house. And this one comes with internet. So we'll be able to do some podcasting while we're there. We'll be able to watch some TV while we're There's there. A backyard with a porch. Yeah. Full kitchen and everything, man. So we're in, it's going to be a great trip. So that's a year. That's almost a year away, though. Basically a year away. So let's get that out of the way. Um, let's get into your tweets out there. And, uh, not a lot of tweets this week, but uh, some tweets. Got to start. <laughs> I'm gonna start with uh, the Habs fan. Yeah, if I can pull it up here, why is it not showing me the tweets? Casey, how's Berger Van doing on the golf course, buddy? <laughs> I heard they were right, Carey Price already. Yeah, he's not doing good on the course either. <laughs> so we'll start off with uh, Casey Salvis, the Salvis ninety four guys. He won Twitter fan of the month for April. the month of April. And if you win Twitter fan month, Twitter fan of the month, you get to have your tweets first and a shout out. So shout out to. Casey Salvis of Salvis94. And his tweets start off. Raw was okay. All the matches were pretty good. Don't understand why Reigns beat Balor. Makes no sense. Reigns, of course, was booed out of the building. Face it, Vince. He will never be a face. Nobody likes him. He's garbage. Four out of ten. Hashtag garbage Reigns. (laughs) Casey, a standard tweet from Casey Salvis. Continuing hate of uh, Roman Reigns. And Greg says he's listening to the podcast while playing 2K17 Universe. I was just playing that last night. By the way, Glorious Greg, I'm actually at some ideas uh, for the channel, uh, doing it, rebooting the universe mode again. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, Casey's last tweet. He does nothing. Also, Brazongo. Oh, okay. I got. I had an Twitter. incoming tweet at the same time as uh, Casey, so it mixed it up. This is why I hate uh, Twitter. So he put SmackDown was okay as well. Don't like Styles being pinned, but hoping Mahal beats Orton at Backlash. Orton is the most boring champion. He does nothing. Also, the Brazongo segment was fantastic. Again, also knowing there to be wa- also knowing there to be watch Ziggler beat Nakamura. Oh, so he's saying also watch WWE, knowing there to be watch Ziggler actually beat Nakamura in his first match. I don't know. He could barely get past Sin Cara, man. Sin Cara is a true stepping stone for SmackDown Live. <laughs> You don't have to go through John Cena. You go through Sin Cara. He is the man. So you put SmackDown 4 out of 10 as well. So you gave both shows the same rating this week. Interesting. Uh, next set of tweets. We'll go into Glorious Greg, who's listening to us live right now and in uh, chat on Spreaker. He says, this is how I felt about Raw this week. Just straight and as a gif of a dumpster fire. Greg, interesting wow. opinion about Raw this week. Uh, we have a different opinion, but we'll get into that. But, you know, everyone has their opinions. There's no wrong opinion out there. Especially for Raw, it's usually a dumpster fire. Yeah. It needs to be a t-shirt. SmackDown was okay. I only enjoyed the Fashion Files segment and seeing Styles and Owen, so I'll give it a 4 out of 10. What match are you looking forward to most at NXT TakeOver Chicago? And he has a gif of, obviously, Bobby Roode. So it looks like he's looking forward to Bobby Roode and uh, Itami. Is his father going to retain his title? Yeah. But, I mean, Hideo Itami versus Roode's going to be a good match, but I think we all know that Roode's winning. Yeah. The match I'm looking forward to is Roderick Strong versus Eric Young. I mean, but don't pull it off on NXT to not shock us once again because we we were live at one of the most shocking title turns that we've seen so far yeah, in Joe NXT. Nakamura. Um, I just don't think Atami's ready. You're he looking forward really to yeah. a You're yet. looking forward to Roderick Strong. I'm actually looking forward to the women's match. Not a lot of people are. I'm actually really intrigued into that. 
But um, your girl Ember Moon's not even in it. I know, anymore. but I, I like Ruby Riot and, and Nikki Cross are nutbags, man. I, I like Nikki Cross. I'm not on the Ruby Riot. I'm fan. just excited to see how physical this match is going to be. Like, it's going to be very, very intense. So, Do you think they add somebody? At the last minute? Yeah. You know, like Peyton Royce, maybe? I don't know. We'll oh, see. I think Roderick Strong versus Eric Young is going to be a great match, too. Yeah, I can see that being a good match. Uh, sucks Braun is hurt. So uh, get well soon, Braun. Hashtag. <laughs> A special roar there for uh, Braun Strowman. Um, his last tweet. Hashtag. <laughs> Two straight ones. One after the other. Also, hashtag bury no man games. Hashtag best for business. Oh, man. You're going <laughs> to... The feud with Juggy just keeps adding fuel to that yeah, fire. Yeah, you, you just keep adding fuel to your fire with uh, the, the, the feud there. should be take over Chicago. Yeah, that'd be insane. Uh, next tweet. Mason Dunbar at Dunbear Vlogs. He puts Raw 5 out of 10 and SmackDown 1 out of 10. Wow, Simple that's a, and short. a role reversal from his rating last week. Mm-hmm. Gave SmackDown a 7 last week, I think. It, it took a dip in the ratings there for Mason uh, Storm slash Dunbar. Thanks, Mason. <laughs> uh, next set of tweets, Juggy Badass at Azazel YT. Coming in late as always, 49 minutes ago. <laughs> he puts, here's the big dog's rant this week. <laughs> Guys, let's give Juicer Mahal a chance. I kind of hope he wins this Sunday. I'm tired of boring Orton. He does nothing with the belt. I'd rather see Sin Cara as world champion rather than punk than his punk ass. Well, you know what? I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if Sin Cara's champion because I guess he's the stepping stone on SmackDown. I don't, I don't understand why he's not the champion right now because Sin Cara should be WWE champion, shouldn't he not? They should be Randy Orton and Mahal fighting over a number one contendership to face Sin Cara. <laughs> I'm just saying. But you know what? Orton's been doing... Uh, Creating more controversy on social media than he has been in the ring on SmackDown. Yeah. I hope that's not the main event on Sunday. I think it's going to be. And Chicago's going to shit all over it. Uh, we'll see. As far as their match on Sunday, I'm going to watch it in, with a grain of salt. Orton is not good enough to carry a match, so both guys will have to work hard. <laughs> punk hard ass, punk ass Orton. But I can't believe I'm saying this. I enjoyed Raw more this week. My boy hashtag Raw's Reigns is slowly improving and sell on selling. Oh, yeah. Oh, he definitely sold all right. He sold the sling. We'll get into that in the that review. It. I give Raw a 7 out of 10 and a SmackDown Live a 5.5 out of 10. I just threw up a little because I enjoyed Raw. Or I enjoyed Reigns always wins more, as in to Raw. Uh, go home episode of SmackDown fucking sucked. Why well, can't both shows ever be good? Yeah. He has a gift that says, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah, uh, Junkie usually uh, criticizes Raw, even though it's got his boy on it. But yeah. It's interesting. You uh, gotta give credit where credit's due, I mean. You do. Honestly, you do. Like, and, it, and Backlash coming up this Sunday, I felt like it was a very underwhelming go-home show. Yeah. Greg, Sin Cara is not the Kurt Hawkins of SmackDown. He's the stepping stone of SmackDown. You need to go through Sin Cara if you want to be credible on SmackDown Live. Just tell me. Just ask Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Anyways, uh, last set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. <laughs> That's right. They go to Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV, and he gets his own entrance theme. And guys, you're wondering why he gets his own entrance theme. He is one. The 2016 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year. And if you win and be honored to win that award, you get to have an entry theme before your tweets read every single show of the year. So congratulations again, as always, to Michael Chow for winning that award. And we'll get into his tweets. And speaking of Michael Chow, he's got his own wrestling podcast, WWE MC TV, The After Show. Go check him out. He's also on Spreaker. So go into our followers and click him and subscribe to him and check out his stuff, guys. He does a lot of giveaways. Yep. I think he's doing one for Money Backlash this week. Or Money, Money in the, the Bank, Bank is his next, his next giveaway. giveaway. So stay tuned for that. So Michael Chow's tweets. Raw was surprisingly good this week. 7 out of 10. The Festival of Friendship 2 starring Goldie and K. Quick. <laughs> I liked, but I can't. I can see these two just. But can these two just retire already? You get the gif of freaking Archer climbing the ladder at Royal Rumble and not getting the briefcase. Uh, Super Mega Roman 2, Bur- 2 Turbo beats the Balor Club. Isn't Roman injured or are those bandages just a part of his attire? Hashtag no cell reigns. <laughs> and then J- Juggy's like, oh, he's did a good job on selling. And then Michael Chell's like, what a terrible selling job. 
Got styles uh, clashings over here. He's got a gif of Roman saying, "Can I get a hug?" <laughs> uh, Kano stick on a pole match. What the fuck? Alexa Bliss is the o- is the only is the only way they have so- <laughs> sold me on that match. Hashtag let the stick jokes begin. Mm. This, this show is too PG, man. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, Michael Chow, SmackDown Live, 0 out of 10. <laughs> Hashtag corporate Michael Chow. Nothing made sense. There was nothing good about this show. This create this is creative right before SmackDown Live, and it's from Big Bang Theory of uh, Sheldon just throwing papers everywhere all around the room. <laughs> I feel like that's how they do Raw uh, most of the time. It's hashtag Steroid Mahal, the Roman of SmackDown Live. He beats Styles and beats up Orton in the same night. Stop it, Vince. You can't get him over. <laughs> There's something that would do with the Styles thing, but I agree with the Orton thing, and we'll get Why into that in review. Why you man? Well, I'm, I hinder gender all the time. I hate hinder gender. <laughs> Question. Who do you think will Shinsuke feud with after Backlash? I think he says I think Rusev would be great. Hashtag strong style versus handsome Rusev, and it's freaking Rusev giving Vince McMahon a hug with <laughs> when he's with League of Nations. <laughs> I don't think they should. I think they should save Nakamura and Styles. Yeah, so I think they're going to do Owens, Owens in a U.S. title good. feud. I think Owens is going to retain. I think it's going to be a, a really good feud unless Styles wins and it's just for a non-title. Or I guess she sends Shinsuke versus Baron Corbin. That'd be cool. I think that'd be a really good feud. Uh, speaking of which, Michael Chow says, where's Rusev? Hashtag SmackDown Live fail. Hashtag Rusev likes hockey. <laughs> yeah, he said he was going to be there, and then he was watching the Preds instead. Yeah. Lastly, how was the Simpsons trivia you guys did last week? Which, uh, <laughs> wish, wish I had done that instead of watching SmackDown Live last week and got Homer backing up into the bush. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but it, man, it was. Oh difficult. man. Okay, so Michael Chow, if, when you when you're listening to this, Corporate Cappy is like the biggest Simpsons fan I know. Like him and our 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 boy No Cell Phil, like no Simpsons, like from like the old the good Simpsons, like which are like season one to ten. Those are like the unreal Simpsons, and this this trivia kicked his ass. Like there were some questions where they didn't even know, <laughs> and it wasn't even from the new old newer Simpsons, from the old Simpsons. So it was All definitely right. a, a a noggin scratcher, but it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I loved it, man. It, I definitely question my my Simpsons knowledge after that trivia, but damn, it was hard. Mm-hmm. It but, was, it, but you know, I liked it. It I was fun. It. I'll go yeah. again, even though we'll get torched. But yeah. but that's it for the tweets this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thank you as always. I don't think Tyler Jones wanted to tweet this week because I think he's too upset about Braun Strowman being out yeah. for six months. Well, storyline six months. Story we'll get into that. Yeah. And shout out to Tyler Jones for his Nashville Predators looking good right now. Yeah, <laughs> Greg's is Rusev World Champ. I, can I, we just can we just point out something? I know it's it's hockey, but the Nashville Predators play a bunch of WWE music. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, the the, the Nashville Predators play a lot of WWE themes in a lot of their uh, their arena antics. So. so, to open the second, they play Finn Balor's theme. I'm pretty sure. Uh, to open the third, and when they win, they play the glorious Bobby Roode theme. Oh, God, Greg, Greg will like that. that. Yeah. And when someone gets a penalty on the other team, they play Psycho Sid's theme. What? Psycho Sid? Psycho Sid when someone gets a penalty. Unbelievable. And then on the Oregon, once in a while, they'll do the Kurt Angle, you suck thing to the other <laughs> team. So Nashville, I guess, is big WWE That's great. Fans. That's so great. if you want someone to cheer for in the playoffs, cheer for them. They're big yeah. WWE guys. Nashville. Oh, Rusev. Maybe it's because of Rusev. And Bobby Roode is always tweeting about the Preds, yeah. too. So Yeah. Michael Chow just got into the chest. Sorry, I thought the show was uh, in an hour. Damn time zones. Yeah, time zones do suck. That's all right, Michael Chow. Um, what we were saying earlier, um, uh, what were we saying about Michael Chow? And he had he had to be listening. I don't remember. Oh, God. Damn it, Michael Chow, for coming in late. <laughs> Let me uh, go back to your tweets. And I, Michael Chow, I know you're just tuning in now. I wanted to tell you something. Was it something that he was asking about? Yeah. Um, A match? No. I'm pulling up the tweet. I honestly can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Doing it live, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> Greg, Michael Chow, you're good. Nah, as long as we got uh, Greg's approval, he's good. <laughs> Thank you, Greg, the for your... glorious seal of approval. <laughs> Greg, did you like my uh, Bobby Roode Matt Relic pull? Yeah, I'm sure he did. It's glorious. <laughs> um, who do you think Shinsuke's is? Is Shinsuke's next feud? Yeah. Oh, the Simpsons trivia. Oh. That's it. Uh, it's about the Simpsons. Yeah, Michael Chow. Uh, it was great. Uh, Michael Chow, uh, I know you're listening right now. Now. Now, now. <laughs> B- Brandon here, or Corporate Cappy, sorry, is a huge Simpsons fan. Like I mean, like, massive. And it kicked his ass. Yeah. It, it was... 
It made me feel like I know nothing about the show. Yeah. Greg says he loved the poll, by the way. It was glorious. Shout out to Kyle Masters for editing the video and putting Bobby Roode's yeah, theme thanks. in the end. <laughs> Anyways, you know what? Let's get into the review. Enough yeah. wasting time here. Because we got to do – we're doing predictions, guys. So stay tuned for the rest of the show. We're going to do TakeOver Chicago and Backlash predictions. Uh, we're taking out uh, the news part and the list of 10 out of this show this week. And I'll be doing a news part in a Sunday Night Heat episode this weekend. So it will be a, new, a weekly news roundup. Um, so the Raw from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey – uh, opening segment, we had uh, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angel. Why do I have Angel written here? My God. From the WWE 2K game? Yeah. Address the Roman and Strowman issue. And he says Strowman will be out for six to nine months with a shattered elbow. And I think that storyline, I don't think he's actually going to be out that long, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take that with a grain of salt, please. I think it's just a ploy to hide Braun Strowman and have a surprise return and to make him look like a John Cena type of come back so i wouldn't doubt if he came back in time for SummerSlam, like you uh, predicted um so great balls of fire we're not going to have him but maybe he interferes in the match at great balls of fire or maybe lesnar retains or something and or whoever the champion is after great balls of fire on the monday or after braun Strowman comes out and attacks the champion and then sets up the SummerSlam match so that's what we think is going to happen but i don't think he's out six to nine months we no. think it's storyline um Crayon goes and he thoughts of an idea what to do for the number one contendership for Brock Lesnar's universal title. And he books at Extreme Rules that they're going to have an Extreme Rules fatal five-way match for the number one contendership. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roman Reigns interrupts this. And he comes out to like heavy boos. Like absolutely Dunn couldn't even mute this. huge boos. And he, even when he starts talking, like he gets, the boos try to increase. It's almost like when Stephanie's talking. Um, but Roman says he doesn't. They don't need to have a fatal five way because this is his yard, and he's the number one contender. Okay, Roman, sure, bud. Uh, Ballard then comes out and he says he's never lost his title, and if Roman wants a piece of the beast, the line starts behind him. <laughs> uh, Michael Child, did you find home, uh, Roman's promo heelish, interrupting Angle and all? Yeah, yes, I did. I think I know that there. He's trying to. They're trying to still put him as a face, but it's almost like they're putting him right in between. Like, he, he's on the line. You know, they haven't really crossed him over to babyface, and they haven't even crossed him over to heel. I think he's literally treading that line on purpose. Like, he's... It's like he's playing to the kids, but at yeah. the same time, he's getting the heel reaction from <laughs> the adults. Yeah, he's still know? trying to be, like, that guy. Like, you know, this is my yard. Everyone comes through me. Like, I'm I'm the guy, even though he get He, he embraces the heel reaction almost. It's um, like a two-way message kind yeah, of thing he's sending It's over. really confusing, in my, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, Joe, Samoa Joe comes out, and he cl- uh, makes the same claim as well, saying that uh, what he's done to Seth Rollins, he deserves to be the number one contender. Um, sure, why not? Uh, Wyatt then comes out, and he cuts a promo on each of them, and basically saying that they're going to run. And then Rollins comes out after and says it's time, f- the time for fight, or... New York, New Jersey didn't come here to watch them talk. It's time for fighting. And then just goes right after uh, Samoa Joe. And then everyone starts brawling. Uh, now you'd think Roman would be the one to end up looking strong here out of all this brawling. But nope. Nope. Finn Balor. Finn Balor is the one to come out on top. Such a tease. And looking strong. Hmm. Tease. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Chow, AJ Styles tweener gets cheered. Roman tweener gets booed. Sounds about right. Yeah, you got you got the the, the cheered tweener and the booed tweener. <laughs> uh anyways, uh so yeah, Balor looking strong. I was shocked. I was honestly shocked it wasn't Roman to look strong here. Like this must have like cr- Vince must have been cringing at this that Balor looked strong out of all people here because of what happened later in the night. This is probably why he was sneak, sneakily laughing at this opening segment, going, oh, you just wait. Um, next, we had Jeff with Matt Hardy facing Sheamus with Cesaro, or Shaysaro. A pretty decent match, except for the biggest botch I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, my God. Sheamus' broke kick. He, like, pushed Jeff into Matt, and, like, Matt kind of stopped himself and, like, Jeff kind of looked confused and didn't know what to do. And he turned around. And then Sheamus went for the bro kick. But it kind of missed Jeff. And he got caught on the rope. And it was just... It was Matt on the... Oh, my God. It was just confusing. It was like and he then... stopped and then did it again. 
it was just it was cringe. And I I I praised RWE's YouTube team for editing it, and they they fixed it up really well on YouTube to to miss the botch because I went and rewatched it. Um, Can you imagine them trying to fix a Dana Brooke match? Oh God, I don't think they could. Holy but this man. led to a, a twist of fate and a swanton bomb for the win for Jeff Hardy. Matt still acting broken. Still, we don't know what's Borderline going on with the you know, all the, over this guy, and we don't even know what the going on with the purchase of the gimmick. There still hasn't been news released you know what I'd about love that. To see? Is a segment with Matt Hardy and like Doctor Shelby or something. Remember Doctor Shelby from Daniel Bryan? Yeah, and I, Kane. I think mm, Matt Hardy would be uh, hilarious doing like a borderline personality yeah. disorder, you know, <laughs> like a, a, a a mental evaluation. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you come out and you say you're this version one, but then you're broke. Are you a broken version one? What's oh, I love it. It's great. Oh God. Anyways, uh, we'll see what happens with the whole broken thing. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. Move on. <laughs> Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox with Noam Dunn. And the beautiful Alicia Fox. Thank God I left before I could see this match. I guess this is the official feud now. Sasha and Alexa. Or Alicia. <laughs> okay. Sure. Match was okay. But Sasha lost clean. Oh, my God. Very, very unexpected. I think this is a way to make Alicia look strong. I like it. You like it. I like it. You I like I, it. Alicia Fox looking good. She won clean. She didn't have her boyfriend Noam Dari interfere. He was just well, there, was kissing, there. His, kissing his wrist and doing his whole whatever the fuck Sasha he does back there. Sasha kiss. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, Sasha better stay away. That's, uh, that's Alicia's guy. You know, she better not get in, into that. You know, yeah. She's got her guy, too, who's backstage and unseen, only on Up, Up, Down, Down, where you yeah, can see him. He's not going to make those uh, attires anymore. Yeah. But... <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> what are they doing with like, Sasha Banks? That was unexpected. Like he, she won clean, scissors kick, and then done. And it was to the back too. That looked painful. I like Alicia Fox, but still, she's not even close to the caliber wrestler Sasha yeah. Banks. Is. And why she is being put in this feud with Alicia Fox out of the title picture is. Beyond I mean, there's me. no explanation, but you know what? Whatever. You're expanding the women's division. You're having Would more you than one match. Would you be saying that if, if fucking Bailey lost clean to Alicia Fox? Yeah. Maybe. Paige lost clean to Alicia Fox? You wouldn't be Probably saying that. Probably not. Exactly. Nah, that's, that's a joke. That would be <laughs> garbage. They, what poor Sasha, man. Hashtag make Sasha great again. Hashtag heal Sasha. That's all I gotta yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, God. The sister, can, Michael Chow, the sister's cake was so savage. Sorry, Cappy. I didn't see that. Tell me I didn't just see that. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, stupid backstage segment after and Noam Dar was like, I was there for my lady mm-hmm. and Sasha blew me a kiss. You said she blew me a kiss. That's right. That's right. Alicia. Noam Dar, you stuck up for Alicia Fox. That a boy. Good boyfriend he is. You know, you're not doing anything on 205 Live. You be a good boyfriend, Alicia Fox. Unbelievable. I'm not talking about this anymore. It's great. You can only talk about it next week when they fight again. Yeah, I won't be on the show. <laughs> Uh, the Miz versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. Really thought this was going to be the main event when they announced this. I was shocked that it happened so early. But anyways, very, very good match. Lots of good spots. Now, there was one spot at the end where Maurice was distracting the referee. Miz tries for a low blow, but Ambrose catches him, uh, turns him around, and then kicks him straight in the nuts. <laughs> but the referee's turned around, so he sees it. DQs him obviously. And C- Dean Ambrose is like, "What the hell, ref? What the hell? Why? Why are you DQ me? What do you mean? Why is DQing you? You just kicked the guy in the nuts. <laughs> How are you complaining that there's a DQ?" Miz uh, gets out of the ring. Is eventually leads to Miz going backstage and all fr- frustrated, uh, going to Kurt Angle and uh, over what happened. And at Extreme Rules, there will be a rematch for the IC title. And if Dean Ambrose gets DQ'd, he loses the title. Why don't they just make an Extreme Rules match so there's no DQ? <laughs> it's at Extreme Rules! The pay-per-view name! <laughs> no, we gotta have a normal match, but if Dean T. Neighbors gets DQ'd, he loses the, the title. What is the point of having an Extreme Rules pay-per-view if not every match is gonna have some kind of extreme stipulation? <laughs> this is extreme. If T. Neighbors gets DQ'd, he loses the title. That's extreme. <laughs> make it a no-DQ match! <laughs> Let them use weapons. Have I, Ambrose have a good hardcore match like he's supposed to have with Brock Lesnar two years ago at WrestleMania that completely flopped. Yeah. Have him do it here. Uh, this, uh, and why is Ambrose kicking Miz in the nuts I and getting know. a heel win? Because like, he's a lunatic fringe. He's a lunatic. He does whatever. He does He does shit that's unexpected. <laughs> and But then he complains after, which kind of pissed me off. I hate how he complained after. 
You should have been just like you should have went over to Miz and started kicking the shit out of him. You're a lunatic. You're supposed to go psycho, man. So can Miz win the title already? <laughs> and then we'll move on. Oh my God, Greg! Goldust, Cruz, and Foxy join the Titus brand and form a new dominant group called the Catering Committee. <laughs> oh my Jesus! Uh, in ring with Alexa Bliss. Uh, Alexa talking about her accomplishments and everything she's done so far, even playing to the crowd's what chance again, uh, again and then uh, calling herself a goddess. Mm. Okay, easy. Well, let's, I don't know. Let's I, pump. I, let's pump the brakes. All right. I agree with that. I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit. So Bailey breaks. Bailey eventually comes out oh, and she cuts cringely. promo. But again, I I agree. I have to somewhat agree that it was cringe. I as much as I want to get behind Bailey and defend her here, I can't. I honestly can't what? <laughs> push myself to defend her because she really needs to go back to the Bailey from NXT. I don't know what the fuck I was listening to this week. I they've just made her look terrible. Like from the moment she became the number one contender back in 2016, where she tried to do that promo on raw talk. Yeah. And Booker T had to redo it for her. I it's was just like the whole Bailey storyline has been screwed up since yeah. the beginning. I'm almost, I was almost vomiting at this. Like I couldn't, why is she playing cope? like such a kid? I, it's bad. They really, it's too, there's playing as a kid and there's do what they're doing. They're kind of pushing her way into like the G category. Like it's bad. So Alexa talks about uh, if they have their rematch, it will be very extreme, and Bailey won't ever get extreme because she's too much of a good girl. And tells Bailey to go sit at the kitty table and leave the fighting to the adults. <laughs> Can I have an extreme rules match with Alexa? I'll let her kick my ass the whole time. I don't so we got some aggression out of Bailey finally, and she attacks Alexa, and then wow. Alexa brawls back like a shock. I can't believe we actually had some physicality out of Bailey. Did she? Did she grab her hair and like? No. You know, she's she, lucky, you know. When she pulls her ponytail. Alexa, and Alexa, if Alexa Bliss did that, she would have been done. Uh, Alexa Bliss finds a kendo stick under the ring oh, man. and absolutely cracks Bailey over the back with it. Like, really, free, like pieces were shattered, pieces were going everywhere. Was it, was it the No Holds Bar Twitter account that tweeted, that's not a good Heimlich maneuver or something? No, like I that? retweeted someone that said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, that backstage, yeah. Backstage while Bailey is getting uh, checked by doctors. Um,. Kurt Angle comes in and books, uh, my lord. At Extreme Worlds, we're going to have a kendo stick on a pole match. So, only kendo sticks can be used in this match. On a pole. What the fuck? <laughs> this can is... they not come up with anything else? It's, like, this is like... treading du- like Vince Russo WCW territory. Like, Vince Russo would have been proud of this match. He, 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 he would have had... Taking credit for all of this. This is almost as bad as those those flag on a pole matches oh, they used God. to have. <laughs> like, I would rather see Hacksaw Jim Duggan climb to the top to get his fucking American flag <laughs> than watch this crap. Oh, man. Why couldn't they just have a, uh, an Extreme Rules match and just have the kendo sticks play factor into the match? Yeah, why not this week they use the kendo stick, next week Alexa uses another weapon, then the week after she uses yeah, another weapon, they just so they have just make extreme an Extreme Rules, rules match. Yeah. And then Raven can give her the shopping cart. God, can then... <laughs> We can we can all be happy. Had no stick on a pole, man. We're like cringe match on a fucking extreme. I mean, as rules. much as I want to see Alexa grab some wood, ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need a <laughs> yeah, I need a drum effect here. This is gonna be terrible. Like like the kendo stick thing. Like she already did the big spot with Bailey in the back of the head. What else is she gonna do with the kendo stick? I don't know. Hit her maybe, in the legs. May, you know what? I could see Bailey. Getting like kendo stick lessons from like Tommy Dreamer next week. Oh no, no! They bring back Tommy Dreamer no. to help her with the kendo stick. To help her, like you know, learn how to use it properly. They bring oh. back Steve Blackman. Jesus Christ! This no. is just treading, treading cringe. And they should have just made it an Extreme Rules match. Why not have a women's yeah. Extreme Rules match? That would be awesome. Other than that, that was intense segment. That was crazy. Uh, I love the Alexa looking good. Michael Child puts Sasha Banks versus Charlotte Hell in a Cell match. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss in a kendo stick on a pole match. Face palm into Ra- Roman's yard. <laughs> uh, what does Roman have to do with it? <laughs> uh, Neville versus T- and TJP versus Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher next. Another good showing and a good match by the Cruiserweights, but again, another bad showing from the crowd who for some reason just don't give a shit. Why? I don't know. You have... Look at the people in the ring right now. You have exceptional talent in a tag team match and pulling out some crazy shit. They're too busy chanting CM Punk. They're too busy fucking blowing up beach balls and pu- tossing them everywhere again. I don't know what the whole thing with this fucking beach ball thing is. <laughs> um, So sad. TJP won with a detonation kick if anyone did care. 
and he won it for his team. And Aries was distracted from from attacking Neville, and that's how TJP won against Jack Eller. I mean, I can't talk about much because you know I can't get interested. If I the crowd being interested plays a huge factor into the match more than me paying attention. I pay attention to the entire match. I really think the cruiserweights need like tag titles. Yeah. Because, like, besides the main title, they have nothing to go for. And there's, like, 15 of them on the roster. Yeah, and they have a bunch of random matches for nothing. You got Cedric Alexander coming back. We have Grand Metal League show up finally this week. So, what? <laughs> Drew Gulak's there. Tony Nese. Fi- everyone's going to get it on TV. Literally only two guys that can fight for the main title. And the other right? guys are just fighting for nothing. Or they need another main title. Like a minor title. A, cr- a cruiserweight mid-card title. Yeah. <laughs> I just think a, a cruiserweight tag title would make sense. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think so. It'd be cool. I mean, you have more people getting into the 205 Light Division with the rumors of Aleister Black being added. You could add so many other people like Kalisto. Like, you could make the 205 Light Division huge, but there's, the potential's there. They just don't do it. We have another cringe segment with Drew Gulak with his no-fly zone sign yeah, on then, uh, Mustafa Ali. Because yeah. uh, Cappy, Roman's Yard equals where creative ideas go to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, kind of makes sense, but this is Roman's yard, Michael Chow. you got to deal yeah. with it. Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns next. One of the matches booked by Kurt Angle where everyone was arguing backstage and after the opening segment. Uh, this is a really good match, although the ending... Wow. Are you fucking kidding me? Roman Reigns wins clean. Are you kidding me, Vince? Roman Reigns at like 50% beat Finn Balor at 100%. 100%. Now, I'm not saying that I think Finn should have won clean here, but the way that they booked it, it just didn't make sense. The way I would have booked it is you would have had Bray Wyatt interfere somehow, either on a Titan Tron to distract him, or actually appear in ring, or maybe the lights go out and he gives a Sister Abigail to Balor while the lights go out, and then the lights come on and he's lied down, and Braun's like, fuck it, I'll... I'll or, or Roman's like, fuck it, I'll just win like this. Or, if he's getting distracted, Roman wins by distraction. In that case, there's more credible for a Roman win, and it's more credible for both guys, because Balor didn't, win, didn't lose clean, he got distracted by Bray Wyatt, and it intensifies their future few that's going to happen at one point. But instead, they completely buried... No, and it, it builds the heel persona that Roman keeps doing and taking it by taking advantage of a potentially downed or distracted Finn Balor. I just... I didn't... I hate... I love the match. I hated the ending. I absolutely... Not, we weren't the only ones. Everyone on Twitter hated it. I'm why, pretty sure everyone hated this. Why is an injured Roman Reigns beating a 100% Finn Balor clean? Like, I don't that even think... That makes him look horrible. Yeah, I don't even think Juggy can get behind this, man. That, that was a, a terrible way... To bury Balor, man. Unfreaking believable. Especially after he beat Roman last year. Yeah, and he looked strong in the opening segment. Now he just said, nah, 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 we're going to have Roman kick his ass. Okay, thanks. Poor Finn, man. Terrible. Uh, As for Roman selling. Selling, yeah, terribly. He he wasn't bandaged in the opening segment. Why all of a sudden now he's a match, he's all of a sudden bandaged? (laughs) Again, like Michael Chell says, it's part of his attire. Like, what the hell is that? Unbelievable. Anyways, get to the unexpected. Golden Truth comes out with their uh, cringy karaoke entrance, man. I'm telling you guys, at this point, I'm reaching for the remote. When it's the shit's coming on TV, I'm reaching for that remote Why? because I want to pull my eye sockets out. I, my eyeballs out of my eye sockets. I don't want to goddamn see this stupid karaoke bullshit with our truth and Golden Truth's head bouncing over the fucking words on TV while they're singing their stupid entrance theme. No! I'm not in, in tuning in the Monday Raw to watch that, okay? I, 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 I doubt any kid at home is singing along. It was terrible. But, well, but, TV. but, something happens here that throws me off guard. Right before I change the channel, Goldust turns on our truth and brutally attacks truth. And then grabs the mic and says, that's what's up. Unbelievable. So, love it. Absolutely so, love it. Gold truth is done. They're done. Thank it's you. Day. It's not a sad day. It's this almost as good. sad as the Festival of Friendship. This is good for TV. You know what I didn't understand? Why was the tipping point for Goldust the loss in the tag team turmoil last night? <laughs> well, the last year, they haven't done anything. Yeah, I think that's probably I think we're going to get more out of it. If we get the the full heel Goldust next week and he brings back everything and he explains why he attacked Archer, I hope he brings up that it's been like, this is not just last, it's not just a turmoil. It's been like a whole year of them not going anywhere in the division and build up. Maybe like saying like Archer has just been bringing Goldust down. 
I love heel Goldust. I'd like love to see it. him in his Darth Maul uh, paint. Yeah, I hope. But I'm I'm so glad that Golden Truth is done. Thank you, Christ, and we don't have to see the stupid entrance scene with the karaoke anymore. Thank you, thank you, thank you, WWE. Golden Truth for giving us a gift. Of tag team of the no, they weren't, man. They're god awful. They're terrible. They're like the, the the job team. They weren't going anywhere. Oh, they're the last people in the turmoil. Yeah, it's because they were placed there. They didn't win themselves to the last match. <laughs> they're god awful. Anyways, get we'll move on to an even other. Uh, well, this th- th- that wasn't cringe, but the opening of that unexpected thing was cringe. But now we move into an actual cringe segment. Enzo and Cass come out to cut a promo, and Enzo being in his hometown, obviously getting the good reaction that he was getting in New Jersey. Uh, Tyus O'Neill comes out and he cuts an Enzo and Cass like promo, but with like his words, <laughs> and I, I thought it was pretty funny. The dummy brand. Yeah, and he gets in the ring. He hypes up uh, Apollo versus Enzo for tonight. But then Big, Cat corre- Big Cass corrects him and says it's actually Titus versus Big Cass. And Titus is like, oh, no, I'm, I'm in a $3,000 suit. I am wrestling. So they end up still wrestling. But Titus wrestles in a suit. Okay. I love your tweet. It says uh, when you accidentally put manager attire on yeah. in 2K17. <laughs> and then he gets big booted in 30 seconds for the loss. So was it like as, cool. small, as short as a tussle in Texas last year? I think it was maybe like 10 seconds longer. Great. So much for the Titus brand. And then Enzo tries to take it. Okay, this is the, the only good part out of all this is what happened after. Enzo is trying to take a selfie with Titus' phone. Apollo doesn't like it and officially turns heel. He officially, I guess it's like him officially joining the Titus brand because he kicks Enzo's head off and then goes and helps uh, Titus O'Neil up and helps him to the back. So like, this is Ty- this is Apollo Crews' heel. I love it. I was waiting for this to happen. To join a Titus brand, I can get behind this. I'm I think glad this, they're finally doing something with Apollo Crew. I think this is going somewhere. I honestly think this is going somewhere. I think this is going somewhere. I'm intrigued to see what happens. Um, yeah, Michael Shaw, I like Apollo Crews attacked, attacked Enzo and Big Cass. Does nothing. Like it. How does it do nothing? It makes him turn heel. Well, at least it it makes him. It shows that he's believing in the Titus brand. I don't know if it's an official heel turn, but it's like it's showing that he yeah. believes in. You what just t- wait, Michael Chell. You'll Titus see what happens. Him. I'm telling you right now, something big's gonna come out of this. It's I can, be you know a- what? The, they just lost Golden Truth as a tag team in the division, so I could see the Titus brand tag team being a good replacement. Why not? I mean, Ty- or Paul Cruz was doing shit all on SmackDown. That's now he's over on Raw. He's actually doing something. So and they're, they're giving Titus O'Neil more TV time. And sure. another add another tag team to the tag team division isn't a bad thing either. Yeah. Especially with the revival over right now. Yeah. So main event was Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt. Actually, really really good match. Uh, Bray's reaction was really good. Bray had a really good reaction tonight or this week on Raw. Uh, Seth obviously gets uh, interfered with by the obvious Samoa Joe, which leads to a DQ. Um, uh, Bray Wyatt and Joe team up for a bit on Rollins, and then Wyatt turns on Samoa Joe. And then gives both of them a sister, Abigail, and we get Wyatt looking strong to end the show. Finally. Are you kidding me? It took us this long to see that. Thank you. I mean, we haven't seen it in a long time. I remember when he used to do it a lot. But now we so finally get Bray Wyatt. against and, those guys. Against two credible guys in Rollins and Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe, like, two, like he turned on a heel, too. Yeah. So it shows that he like he's not with anybody. He's, with he's by his himself. own guy. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chavez, no, I mean when I, Apollo attacked Enzo, Big Cash just stood there. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what you meant. <laughs> Okay. Maybe maybe Cass knew that Enzo deserved it because he's fucking annoying. <laughs> but yeah, what's wrong with Enzo Mori, man? He's a uh, he's oh a good uh, he's, smash he's talker, treading, Skywalker. He's treading the cringe line for me right now. Hmm. I don't know. I like him. <laughs> um, but Zero love Bray dying. Wyatt looking strong to end the show. That was that's oh something God. we can agree on right there. That's amazing. Um, we've been pushing for Wyatt to look strong once, and th- th- the fact that he looks strong over Seth Rollins and Mojo. That's actually making him look credible. They're doing a good job. They're, we thought that Raw was going to bury his ass and we wouldn't get anything from Bray Wyatt, but they're doing such a good job with him, and this is a smart way, smart booking to end the show. So, well, According to JD's news, apparently Bray was very upset about being drafted to Raw and his WrestleMania mm-hmm. match was changed. He was apparently supposed to beat Randy Orton, and then it changed. And then Vince, like... Told them like, "Hey, I'm gonna protect you on Raw, and we're gonna, you know, good. gonna do a good job on Raw." So. Good, and they have. They, they, look at that! Look at that ending to Raw. I'd be all, if I was Bray Wyatt, I'd be so happy to go out and end a show looking strong over Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe at the same time. And that, that's insane. Like I was asking for last week, I think I I really like the fact that they're doing a number one contender match at a pay per view. Yeah, like that's what I was calling for. I said we need more 
number one contender matches at pay per view, so they actually mean something. Yeah, you'll just about. have a regular one on one match at a pay per view, and you do an extra good spot here or there to make it pay per view quality. Because I'm tired of just number one contender matches just being on Raw and SmackDown. I think they should save number one contender matches for pay per views too. Greg says Bray for Universal Champ. I that'd be uh, a likable shocker if Bray Wyatt came out of Extreme Rules as the number one contender. It's too bad that Raw doesn't have a Money in the Bank because I could see Bray Wyatt winning Money yeah, in the Bank for Raw. One hundred percent. But we know who's winning that. We're still. I'm still on my prediction of Baron Corbin. So we'll see what happens oh, when we get to that point. Sinkara. Oh yeah, Sin Cara. Sin Cara needs to win. He needs to get that title, right? Anyway, speaking of Sin Cara, SmackDown. You forgot to give a rating. Oh yes, Raw. I gave uh, Raw seven out of ten this week. It was a good show. I enjoyed it. A lot of stuff made sense. I gave my points where they need to go, and I gave it seven out of ten. I'm giving it. An eight, but I'm subtracting two points for so Sasha seven? losing to Alicia. Oh, so Fox. so a six, okay. <laughs> so I'm giving it six out of ten. It would have okay. gotten eight, but Sasha losing clean to Alicia Fox just killed it for me. Right, fair enough. I would have gave it two extra points, but I think that's where my seven came from. The two plus from Sasha losing to Alicia Fox. Okay. <laughs> what about Bailey? How'd she turn? Uh, SmackDown, SmackDown review, the blue brand. Uh, SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. Boy, Joe Cronin was there. And one thing I want to point out uh, out of this opening segment here, uh, boy, Joe Cronin said that he was there. And um, during the opening segment when the wrestlers were talking, he heard this really, really loud buzzing noise coming from the ceiling. And it, he literally couldn't hear half the wrestlers talking in the ring. And he said he was looking around. People were actually looking confused, going, what the hell are these people saying? Then I guess Justin Labar was also there. And he looked at Justin going, what, man, can you hear them? And he's like, no, man. Um, it's very strange, but you can actually hear it. If you go back on WWE's YouTube channel and you go to that and you watch that opening segment, and when Jinder's talking, you can hear it the loudest when Jinder's talking because I don't know what the hell. Jinder Hall, like his volume was turned down. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. Like he was speaking like this, like I'm Jinder Mahal. Like that's this how he was talking. Fucked up with the mic system. But you can hear when he's talking, you can hear like this loud buzzing noise. I'm like, that must have been so annoying for the people watching SmackDown there, man. I would have been pissed was off. It the whole time? Yeah, and I guess uh, Joe says it might have been like a vet to, to air out all the pyro smoke, but it was so loud. And he's like, the whole opening segment, you couldn't hear anyone talk. And then TV side. The yeah. opposite TV side. There's like yeah, no and then he, he took a picture. The opposite TV side, the hard camera. So the side that you can't see on TV, there was nobody over there. They they blacked it all out. How do you not sell enough seats over there? The, the, you can sell out TD Garden, which is like an hour away. But you can't sell out this arena for SmackDown Live. Unbelievable. That's terrible, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Kevin Owens opens the show with the new and improved highlight reel. It's the highlight reel logo, which was Kevin Owens' highlight reel with his colors on it. Disgraceful. <laughs> that was great. I loved it. Uh, that's really well done we'll by Kevin Owens. By man. Nah, you're not getting sued. He, he has the right to do it. Uh, no, he's still bitter. <laughs> AJ Styles eventually comes out and tells Owens that he's basically stealing from Jericho now. Exactly. But uh, but 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 Owens tells AJ that whatever Chris Jericho can do, can do Owens can do better. <sighs> that's right. Owens can do better, baby. Yeah. Yeah, he can. He can look at him, man. I think that was a great highlight reel. That was great. He had two. That was the worst rated highlight reel of all time. Oh come on! You're giving it a terrible rating. That was actually perfect. Styles was on it. You have to give it a good rating. I love Styles, but you know what? <laughs> Get your, what happened to the Kevin Owens show? Yeah, and no, I was a little bit upset over that, but I think that was more, that was a raw thing because it was the old raw logo. Go, right? They could have done it maybe with the old SmackDown logo, but maybe when he turns sort of fate, I don't know. Uh, Styles tells Owens that he will win the U.S. title and bring the title back to good old U.S. of A. Okay. The suing of Jericho. Cash it in, man. Michael Chow says. Um, then Juicer Mahal comes out looking bulkier as always. Man. Uh, now, is he going mute? Because I couldn't hear a word he was saying this week. It's I'm like going, going to like... beat you, AJ Styles. I couldn't hear any. Oh, man, it's like his mouth was full of powder. I couldn't hear shit. He's even more. Even then, he's more monotone and boring than Randy Orton cutting a heel promo. Like uh, Jinder talking is terrible, man. How can you credit? How can this guy be a credible WWE champion? I know, I know you people out there want him to beat Randy Orton because you hate Randy Orton, but Jinder is not the guy to do it. I'd rather not switch from boring to more boring. I think Jinder is the perfect guy to take the title. He's terrible. 
He has got awful mic skills. He's, He's not exciting. Maharaja. He's the Maha. Shut the fuck up. Huh? <laughs> he has an impressive diet routine. No, oh my He's impressive so diet routine. My ass. It's a guy. His diet routine consists of maybe eating a lot of meat and then, oh, where's my syringe? Oh, there it is. Right into the ass. Maybe that's why he has the Singh brothers there for the places he can't get. Yeah, man. He, 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 when you're bulky like that, you can't turn around all I the way. I want to say if you go back, if you guys listen to Talk is Jericho. He had a good episode with Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal talks about how he was actually uh, really be, uh, turned to alcoholism uh, when he was fired from WWE. And then he started working out again. And then two months later, he got a call back. <clears throat> working out. It's actually... Okay. Putting all the steroid stuff behind. <laughs> it's, it's a good episode with okay, Jinder if yeah. you want to go watch it. Um, Michael Chow says, no, bro. 205 Live, steroid Mahal versus Tony Neat in a drug testing match. Okay, well, Jinder Mahal <laughs> wouldn't be able to make 205 <laughs> because his, his one arm is they, already 205. They'll have, they'll have to make an exception. <laughs> I can't wait for Jinder's elite figure, man. All uh, the veins popping out of it. Oh, my God. Great. I don't think that's going to be very detailed here. They might have to double the price in that. Uh, Jinner talks about him being the actual guest on Kevin Owens highlight reel and says that all Americans will be bowing down to him when he becomes WWE champion. All right. Uh, how can you not like Jinder? He's from Calgary. Sorry. I fell asleep for a second. AJ Styles tells Jinder to focus on tonight. Then Jinder says he will lose to him tonight. Ooh, good comeback Jinder. And then AJ tries to attack Owens, but Owens runs away. And that ends the segment as it turns into the opening match of AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. Good match. It was a decent match. Uh, AJ setting up for the phenomenal forearm. Owens attacks AJ from behind with the U.S. title. As the Singh brothers were distracting yeah, the ref. Yeah, were distracting the ref on the other side. This leading to uh, Mahal hitting his finisher from the attacked AJ for the win. Now, this I can be okay with. Unlike the Finn Balor and Roman Reigns bullshit we got on Raw. He and didn't it, win clean here. He didn't win clean here. AJ still looks credible because Owens attacked him from behind when the ref wasn't looking and trying to get the Singh brothers off the apron. This is the way to do it. SmackDown does it right. Raw does it wrong. Unbelievable. At least Reigns or at least Jinder didn't beat Styles completely clean. Yeah. And Although like I don't say- agree with it. I still hate that fucking AJ Styles getting buried here still. Even though it was still credible. Um... But, Jinder Mahal looking strong twice in one night. Holy shit, they're pushing this guy. No, but he's going for the WWE World title. He couldn't lose to Styles here. Yeah. That wouldn't have made any sense for him to... I think, you know match. what they should have done is had Owens attack Styles, but the ref see it and cause the DQ and have Jinder win by DQ. No, Styles would have won by DQ. Or Styles would have won by DQ. I mean, I'm okay with it. I mean, a lot of people are revolting on Twitter saying, how can Jinder beat Styles? If you actually watch the fucking match... You realize it made sense. Yeah, and Styles didn't actually beat him clean. AJ was actually dominating on the entire exactly. match. Jinder didn't kick his ass. Styles won the entire match. I'm sure in a one on one match, clean Styles would win yeah. ten times out of ten. But they have to make Jinder look good going yeah. into the WWE title match. So yeah. I'm okay with the segment. I liked it. So we move on. Fashion Files, and I didn't. Oh I, my god! I, I forgot to rewatch this it because I didn't see phenomenal. it. So I'm gonna let you explain it because I didn't watch it. Oh man! So they're in their Fashion Files. Uh, office I guess you could say and there's a bunch of random photos everywhere and <laughs> Tyler Breeze comes in looking like a janitor holding yeah. a mop and he's got like a fake mustache on and a, <laughs> a thing on his head and he comes in and then he starts talking about how I don't know he was just like in a different trance he was in like a janitor trance he was yeah. holding the mop like Perry Saturn held the mop before <laughs> and then they started going through people's uh people's gear Fandango holds... He's in, like, a police uniform. Holds up Baron Corbin's bag, says, Corbin's t-shirts, all wolves on them. <laughs> then he grabs Sami Zayn's, like, <laughs> brief boxers, and like, Ugh. <laughs> And then they, they hold up the, the Usos' day one-ish hoodie, and Fandango goes, day one is H. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. great. And then he finally gets Tyler Breeze out of the trance, and he's like, man, I don't know what I was doing. And Fandango's like... You did what you had to do, man. <laughs> it was just, it was phenomenal. I love Brazongo. I love the fashion files, dude. They're getting pushed finally, segment. man. Finally, and you could hear the crowd popping for yeah. it too. Like they actually enjoyed this segment. Like we were, we've been begging for a, a Van Dango push for a long Both time. Both these now. guys are such good wrestlers on their own, and and obviously good actors. They can cut good promos like this, like Miz level, like when Miz was doing the Total Bella bullshit. Like they're just entertaining. Know? Like, I don't even know if they're completely faces either because they have 
They have American Alpha on the fashion yeah. files. Speaking of that, where the hell? Are yeah, they where made? is American Alpha? They're we not need even the hurt. milk carton with them on. Yeah, it. I'm gonna have to make one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it myself. And, and Honestly, coffee. like what happened to these guys? They're supposed to be this next big tag team coming in from yeah. NXT. They won the titles. They had a bad run. Then they lost the titles, and now we haven't seen them anywhere. I don't know. That's why I, I thought they should have went to Raw and yeah. Enzo and Cash should have went to SmackDown. Yeah. But no. Nope. So this fashion files led into the fashion police or Brazongo because they're still the commentators are still referring to him as Brazongo. So are they called the fashion police Brazongo? <laughs> like, are they both I guess it's names? Like a side nickname. Anyways, they faced the Colognes. It's decent, but a very very quick match um, because the Usos came out and cut a very very good promo on Brazongo after. Really, really good heel promo by the Usos. They weren't doing um, their 12 days till no, this, 12 days till that. Definitely building their Backlash match. The Backlash match looks actually unreal. That's one of the matches I'm looking forward to at Backlash, which we'll get into in their predictions. Um, but SmackDown, showing us one again, that they can make anyone look good, and they can make stars out of anybody. Like, they just need to do it with, Do- with Ty Dillinger, because I don't know what the fuck they're doing with him. New feuds. I like it. Brazongo yeah. versus Usos. New feud. Great. Like <laughs> Who would have thought you would have... Two months ago, you would have you couldn't have told me that at Backlash this year... Brazongo is going to face the Usos for the tag team titles. You couldn't have told me that because I would have told you to go just screw up. Just I would like have told AJ you Styles wrong. said on the Talking Smack where he kind of went, oh shit, I fucked up. Yeah. Where he said, SmackDown is where you go to make stars. Raw takes them. Yeah. So I heard an interesting uh, idea from uh, a fellow podcaster uh, about what to do with the Usos after. And he thinks the Usos are going to retain. And he thinks that New Day is going to come back and they're going to feud with the Usos for the tag team titles. They did. They they shoot it on Raw, but it was a role reversal. The who, the Usos were face, and New yeah. Day was heel. So I, I think I, I like it this way too. Yeah. I think it's going to be a really good feud if that actually the happens. Usos. Yeah. I think it's actually our boy JD who thinks that. I think it was him. Um, we had a we had a contract signing. Are you, we need a contract signing for this this bullshit really for a tri- for a, a three woman tag team match. A, a, a six woman tag team match needs a contract. Are signing. you kidding? But no other match on the card needed one, right? Heaven forbid you had Jinder Mahal and anyone have a contract signing for a big match like Jinder Mahal's biggest match out of his entire career. But you have a contract signing for this bullshit. It was terrible too. Each part of it, I hated it. Each of them cut a promo before signing the sheet. Shade like encouraging each one to say something before signing the. Like, oh my god! Stop it! Just just sign the goddamn can thing and fight. Can I talk about the best part or no? Yeah, there you go. The cringeworth on the James mic. James Ellsworth saved this entire. No, promo. he didn't. He made it worse. He killed it. He goes. We all know Becky and Charlotte have a thing for me. And he goes, Becky, I'm about to oh, put some man. put some water on your straight fire. I drink a water. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> He goes, I'm going to put some water on your straight fire. You can't handle me. Duh. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, Charlotte, you call yourself the queen, but realistically, the princess of Staten Island is going to win the title one day, and she's the only one that can have me. Duh. What's with this new duh thing? And then he tells (laughs) Naomi that he's going to, she's going to steal his glow, or that he's going to steal her glow. Duh. I loved it. James Elder should just get off WWE TV. (laughs) Duh. James Ellsworth equals ratings, man. That was great. God. Stay tuned in January where all 30 participants in the Royal Rumble sign contracts in the longest segment of all time. Like, I'm jealous. <laughs> That's going to last like the entire three-hour episode of Raw. They're going to have to do like a super show and do like a five-hour episode of both shows in one night. <laughs> Anyways, um, after that, Naomi tried to attack James Ellsworth. And, like, Shane tried to break it up, and it was just very awkward. Thank God it went to a commercial. I was never thankful for a commercial up until that point. And uh, speaking of SmackDown, I totally forgot. SmackDown's getting an update with commercials, guys. If you guys don't know, and about uh, sporting, some sports do this. Uh, NASCAR's done it, and I think uh, baseball's done it or something like that, or football. I don't remember. But uh, s- coming soon to SmackDown, we're going to have picture-in-picture during commercials. And what that means is... While SmackDown is during a commercial, it'll shrink to a small screen, and you'll see you'll be able to still watch the action. You won't be able to hear it, but as the commercial's playing, you'll still be able to watch what's going on in the ring while the commercial is happening, which it's is amazing. Because it takes so much away from the match when you don't see what's happening. You come back, yeah, and then like it would be like watching a hockey game, and then they go to commercial in the middle of the game, and then you come back. It's like, oh, it's two nothing. What happened? Yeah. So to me, it's great. It's like if you were watching. If I give an example, say Naomi versus Charlotte. 
and Naomi was dominating the match, and they went to commercial. All of a sudden, you come back, and it's Charlotte dominating Naomi. You're like, what the hell happened? This way, with the picture-in-picture, the picture, you can actually see what's going on during the commercial break. And I actually love the idea, and it's actually coming to SmackDown, and I cannot wait for them to actually do that. So It's going to be good. Uh, yeah. Because uh, it's so much different when you're there compared yeah. to when you're watching it on the TV. Mm-hmm. Our boy uh, Joe Cronin mentioned that. Uh, so Naomi versus Carmella after we came back from commercial break here. It was a decent match. Uh, at one point, the welcoming committee tried to interfere on Naomi, and the ref threw them out. And as they are walking out, they're getting chirped by Becky Lynch and Charlotte. Becky Lynch and Charlotte end up attacking them. And while this is all going on, Naomi is getting distracted. And sh- my my girl Carmella wins via roll-up. Oh, yeah, me and Michael Chow's girl Carmella, Bay Mella, wins via roll-up against the champ twice now. He's got two wins. I think there's a title shot, in my opinion. I'm just saying. Uh, Charlotte, you need to back away. Carmella deserves that title shot. It's about time she became relevant. Right? It's because I mean, James Ellsworth is bringing her down. That's an excuse. That's yeah, not an excuse. It's true. Fuck James Ellsworth. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Alexa and Carmella were called up at the same time. Look what Alexa's done. Look at Carmella's done. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Michael Chalup should have been Naomi versus Carmella for the women's title and Charlotte, Becky versus Natalia and Tamina at Backlash. Duh. Exactly what Michael Child said. Yes, please. Can that we, should have happened. Can we please have James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch? Dude, I'm telling you, Carmella's going to win the women's title, man. She's going to win it this year. I guarantee it. want to make a bet on that. I, I think she could. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, from me, that Carmella will win the women's title this year once. At least once. It could be for one night. She's going to win it once. The, she doesn't. She's not marketable enough right now. Like, she's not selling merch. The crowd's not behind her. They need to do something. I think with they're him. gonna pull an angle where he, she dumps James Ellsworth. Like James Ellsworth's gonna come out, and that's why I think they're they're making Ellsworth a heel, a total heel, for the crowd to get so much heat behind Ellsworth that when Carmella finally turns on James Ellsworth, the crowd can get behind Carmella. Can we please have Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch? Because they've been teasing <laughs> it on Twitter for like a month and a half. Oh man, I I, I still because there is a pub- publicly traded company. I doubt they go that route and do a woman versus man match. But Ellsworth would get his ass kicked. Yeah. I st- I f- Again, then you have men going, oh, what the hell? This is sex is against men. You're going to have those guys. Yeah, well, those guys can, I don't know, go watch TNA. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so we had a really, really good Ziggler promo here. It's actually hilariously done. Uh, he cuts a promo, a really good promo. He says, uh, hi- showing the the WWE the highlights of Nakamura, what he's done on the SmackDown uh, roster so far. And it plays his theme, and then it cuts out and says, no footage found. Yeah, it's like that, please stand by. Yeah. <laughs> Sound. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, see, nothing, and then he shows a highlight of what he's done. And, oh man, he! <laughs> I wonder if he had anything to do with his promo because I'm like, oh my god, this is like so overkill of Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Anyways, it. Uh, it was good. I I actually enjoy it. It, it hypes up their match. I wish they would have gotten a little bit physical, maybe, but again, I honestly think they're saving that. One thing I want to point out: why in the Dolph Ziggler promo package did they not have him beating Sin Cara in there? You know what? Yeah, good, 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 good observation there, uh, Corporate Cappy. You know what? That should have been the first thing we seen because him beating Sin Cara. What well, I would have been like, oh man, okay, that's over. Like Nakamura is losing against Ziggler this Sunday. I, he beat Sin Cara, man. Why was that footage not in there? Can Ziggler get a title shot now? Because he beat Sin Cara. I mean, that deserves title shot. WWE title shot. So he should be the number one contender after Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton. Just saying. But um, <laughs> anyway, apparently they did have a dark match after Two Hundred Five Live. Yeah, and apparently, uh, according to Joe Crone, he said that uh, this was probably the best one he's seen. Because he actually watched footage from the last two. He said this is the best one. They've done more stuff in it. So it looks like they're, like, building up to the match. They did more stuff to see, okay, we're ready to go. Let's put it all out in the line now this Sunday. I think that's going to be a really good match. And just from those reports, man, guys, in in a way, it's almost underrated right now for some reason. I think that could be the main event. It could. There's the potential of it being the main event. It's, it's going to be really good. We're going to get Chicago, a really good match out of that. In, in Chicago, Chicago, especially with the they crowd, would, they man. would get behind that. Yeah. Especially the way they've been building Backlash. But like, they'll, be, they'll be as good as the, the when he faced Sami Zayn at uh, TakeOvers of San Antonio. Yeah. Either like either way, they've been building Backlash all around him. All the mm. promo packages, all the, the vignettes for Backlash have been about Nakamura. Yeah. I think it's either going to close the show or open yeah. the show. Michael Chow, he, he says that uh, he, he was on the poster back. He didn't show up for the go-home show. In a way, he could have 
but I actually like the idea of keeping them off I TV. Love it. They're, they're building again the, the aura that is Nakamura. And if you give it all away every week, then it's not going to yeah, be as, and, as special. And as much as I hate what they call him, the artist known as Nakamura, it, it, it's good that what they're doing with Nakamura. You don't want to keep showing him every week and having the same entrance every week because the entrance is going to get dull. His entrance is, is like what makes Nakamura. It's a part of him. I think he's a guy that you can have on the show once a month. Yeah. He's I, 100%. And you build them up like this up until you get you, – if you want him to be on every week's show, you wait for WrestleMania season, and that's when you book him against AJ Styles. The match, I think they're saving up until then. I honestly think they're going to do Styles versus Nakamura next year's WrestleMania. And Cena versus Nakamura at so yeah. SummerSlam, if that. Yeah, so – Good promo by Ziggler. Yeah, very, very good. I really like the build for this match. Yeah. Uh, Baron Corbin versus Randy Orton. Uh, good match. Randy won clean as WWE champion. Uh, okay, I, I, I was pissed at this at first. But it, it makes, makes sense because he is the WWE champion, and Baron Corbin still looked good because he was able he to was, keep up with yeah. Randy Orton. He was dominating Orton the whole. He yeah. was do- dominating the WWE champion the whole match. Yeah, and then we get an RKO out of nowhere. Obviously, typical Randy Orton. But I, it, I don't think it, it doesn't bury Corbin at all, though, no. because it, it elevates him to wrestle the WWE champion. Yeah, I can't like I, as much as I want to disagree, and it's just because I love Baron Corbin. I can't His because time it, will it, come. It, I, I, we think it's he's smart. winning money in the bank. Yeah. Uh, Jinder Mahal then comes out and cuts another cringe fucking promo. And again, like him talking, I'm just like, oh my God, I'd rather actually watch paint dry on a wall than hear Jinder Mahal talk once again on TV. I love his heel promo. It's terrible. He sounds like, oh man, I want to nail, I can't, I don't want to go as far as nails on a chalkboard. I actually just might want to watch paint dry because that's actually less cringe than hearing nails on a chalkboard. But it was, oh man. And then them cutting a promo on each other, it's like, my God, it's like two sloths trying to get a conversation through to each other, man. It's, it's terrible. Um, but you know what? Jinder's getting legit heat, though. Like yeah. he's getting good heat. The way he's the way he's saying it, bro. He could have some more excitement. The way he's saying it, in the in the, the context of his promo, uh, him like tur- like just basically like running down to the United States and you know boosting up India is a way to get you know legit what? heat. I think if if Jinder was facing. A more interesting person as a WWE champion, it would look a lot better. Yeah, Randy Orton's just so boring. Yeah. So the Singh brothers jump Orton from behind, yeah. and after Orton fends him off, Jinder then jumps Randy Orton, gives him the the finisher. I always forget what he's calling it, and uh, it ends the show looking strong. Another backstage segment: uh, Corbin attacked Zayn. Oh yeah, and Corbin Zane attacked the Sami Zayn. Uh, that's going to be a good match at Backlash. We think uh, Corbin and Sami Zayn. That's going to put on a really good show. Um, but I gave SmackDown a 4 out of 10 this week. It didn't do a lot for me. I thought Raw was better. And just by adding up all the points and the missing of Dillinger, 4 out of 10. Where, and we have him going in a, in a freaking pre-show kickoff match. Oh, against my Aiden God. on freaking believable Ty Dillinger is in the pre-show. And why is Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, who weren't on SmackDown this week, on the main card, and Dillinger and Aiden English are on the pre-show? And you got Eric Rowan on Talking Smack.